What's up guys and welcome to another video. I'm pretty stoked for this one because I'm down here in Philly and I scored a deal on this old Plymouth Fury. I believe it's a 1965. This thing's been sitting in a, a yard. It wasn't even a junkyard. It was just some guy's backyard. It had a ton of old vintage and classic cars and it's been sitting for many years. Don't know why it was parked, but look at the restoration that, that was done on this previously. Whoever did it had, had some great taste. I love the color. This is gonna be a, a will it run video. Nobody's messed with it at all. Didn't even try rotating the engine, nothing. Uh, the price was right on it, so I snagged it. You know, it's got some, some rust uh, around, but overall, super solid. And I just think this is the coolest looking wagon. I mean, look at the front end on that thing. Oh yeah, sucking gas and hauling ass. And a quick look in the interior, and then we'll get it loaded up. Uh, well, yeah, doesn't really smell too bad in here. And that's your first look. So let's get this baby home. You gotta love the old thick steel. Like, been rusting, but plenty of meat left on there. Pretty sure those tailgates are gonna have to come off because this thing is super long. I gotta invest in a tilt deck trailer, it'd be nice. I left my normal jump battery for the winch in that bass dumpster, so I'm gonna find out if this little 4000 amp lithium ion uh, JF Eggwo jump pack will do the trick for getting the car up on here. Let's, let's see. Uh, yeah, so far so good. Will she make it for the full run now? Now, the story with these cars is uh, there was like 60 of them or so, and and somebody passed away and then a guy bought these through the state um and so there's there's no titles but i can get a title for it from uh through the state so now i have a feeling somebody's going to see this car on the internet and maybe be able to tell me more than i know about the previous owner because it's pretty darn distinct so Already quite a bit of tongue weight on that, but I think I'm gonna have enough room to close the gates. And yeah, that jump pack worked awesome for it. They're not really designed for that, but it felt plenty strong. Perfect. And that's good to go. Yeah, what the heck, I'm down to Philly. Might as well take the little Meepo Mini for a ride, get food and a couple drinks maybe. Good Time Tavern. Looks like a friendly place. I tell you, this place is a good time. They got free roast beef sandwiches. They don't have a food menu, but they got free sandwiches. That's freaking awesome. That's an awesome little spot. And now let's get the Fury home. Keep in mind, this is like a mechanics vlog kind of, kind of video. So there are timestamps down below if you want to skip through any of this, this uh, vlog style stuff. And we're back. Look at the sunset with the lighting here. This looks crazy. Back home, finally ready to tear into it. Let's see what motor's in this. Uh, kid you not, I haven't even popped the hood. Uh, so I'm a little excited too. All I did was look underneath and see that there was an engine and transmission and that the whole thing wasn't rusted out. Yeah, you know, the price was right. So let's, uh, let's see what we got. Oh, darn it. Oh, there we go. 
Okay. All right. Uh, looks like, I suppose, a 383. Seen that on the Elbrock intake. And I, I guess I'll have to do some more research, but yes. It looks like an original engine to me. It's a Chrysler, so that's good to see. I'm glad there's not a, uh, there goes a, a squirrel over there, Leo. He'll probably come back to visit. Holly four barrel carburetor. Got a Holly electric pump, massive super coil on it. And yeah, let me get some numbers and then we'll see what we got going on. For what I was just reading, there should be a block number on the left side. There we go. Hopefully you guys can read that. And inside the driver door should have the Vintag. Yep, there we go. Let's look it up. First four digits on the VIN is P556. So it's a Fury 8-cylinder, Fury 1 station wagon, built 1965 in Newark, Delaware. Looked up the engine number. It's a 246-8130. So it's a 383B, 59-71. So that could be the original engine. Now, does she rotate? Yes, not locked up. Awesome. That sounds rusty on the water pump, though. Ah! Figure I'll pop the spark plugs out, spray some lube in the cylinders before we go rotating it over. It's got older lights in it. Inch and a quarter socket on the crank. Let's turn this over and see what it sounds like. Turns over good. I think the loudest part is the water pump and the, the belts. Uh, let's go crank her. Oh, there goes the electric fuel pump. Wow. Oh, it's got fuel too. I can hear it struggling. No key. The coupon camelback offer expires 326 2000. That means this thing was on the road. That's not that long. That's not that long. That's about 20 years. Okay, 21 years ago. I swear the millennium doesn't even seem that long ago, but eh, 21 years, that's pretty long. Probably the worst part in here is the mold on these seats. Oh, that's terrible. But this thing's been sitting all these summers just growing stuff. And here I am sitting all over it. Look at these old seats. That's pretty cool. It just goes totally flat like that. It'd be great if I found a key up in here somewhere. Lots of spare parts. No pump. Ooh, yeah, that's old gas. Raunchy. Not. Oh! <laughs> There's the little tree rat. Oh, he's going crazy. Do you have him? Yeah, I got him, kinda. And so that's an update on Leo. Can you get him off of me, please? He likes you. Can you? Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Home <laughs> right. <I'm> base. <laughs> All right, so back to work. Original floor pins, a oh, little rust hole there. Real good shape though. And next option is try some junk keys and maybe a screwdriver. Oh, the whole thing's spinning there. I could probably get this rekeyed. It's labeled on the back. Ground, ACC, battery. So I can hot wire this super easy. We'll probably hook this up to auxiliary fuel, but let's see what the gas in the tank looks like. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty nasty looking stuff. It smells terrible, I'll tell you that much. All right, fluids. Oil's full. Power steering. Low, but some in there. Red. Is bone dry as far as I can see. Oh, shoot. Right, it's coming out of the block, out of the side of the block. Oh, a freeze plug. Yes. All right, so it needs freeze plugs. Well, I should have put water in this instead and tripping coolant all over the grass, but uh, you know, it's going below freezing tonight, so I figured to put some coolant in. All right, let's give it a crank, see what that sounds like. <laughs> sounds good. Let's check for spark. Nothing. Right, not getting power at the primary hot side of the coil. What kind of bobo? I hear clicking when I do that. You get a little bit of voltage. Runs all the way over to a wire nut, so I'm sure that could be part of the problem. I guess let's just jump the coil for now. Let's see what that does. It's good, it's sparking a little bit, so we know we got continuity. Load. And we got spark. Cool. So, my main goal right now is to just, I should really be pulling the carburetor off and checking that out, but I want to see if this motor is blown or has a rod knock or something like that. Because, uh, yeah, we got to do that freeze plug and we might end up just pulling the motor to do all of them. Let's see what this trans got, too. Yeah, fluid on the stick. There's some red. I got a fresh fuel supply hooked up. I'm going to purge the lines of that old fuel. All right, looks great. Yeah, I think it's got some good flow. And let's see if this carburetor starts shooting um, out or if the floats still work. Yeah, it built up pressure and hit the the bypass in this. It sounds like this must be a bypass valve in here or something. cam in it too. That thing sounds gnarly. Quiet though. So Let's take a look inside this Holly carb and see what she's looking like. Oh yeah, this, this one was completely dry, so this one was getting fuel, but the other's got a stuck float probably. So not too, eh, it's pretty bad. Yeah, definitely got a 
go through this whole thing and get a gasket kit because these gaskets rip too. I mean, the primary side is actually not too filthy. The secondary side is the one that's had a bunch of buildup, so I'd like to pop this plate off and see what's under there. I'm not too familiar with these Holly carburetors. In fact, I'm not familiar with them at all. enough room to replace these plugs. It looks like all of them are leaking and plenty of access on the driver's side. Just got to remove the starter. And then here's the one that blew out on the passenger side. Uh, a good amount of room to get those too. I wonder if there's any on the back of the block. I just looked up a picture of a 67 383 and it looks like nothing on the back, which is great news. <laughs> Can't believe that actually came out. Ooh, some good stuff up in there. Lots of sludge. And I'll do that six more times. One point six three two. All right, Advance Auto had some H five A three plugs. Nine bucks. Can't beat it. And Jen came for the ride, rocking the seventies Schwinn. And to drive these new plugs in, we can use a freeze plug or core plug installer like this with uh, different sizes leo stopped over to say what's up uh so this just snaps into here like so and then you see we can get a nice angle on that and hit it with a hammer what's up bud what's going on looking healthy yeah looking for food huh all those sounds oh he is hungry instead of doing one at a time best move is to remove all of them and then we'll get in here with a garden hose and flush out some of that crud from the bottom of the block too This one's real clogged up under it. And you, you wanna make sure when you're taking these out that you don't scratch or put deep gouges in the, the casting of the block because uh, then you could uh, end up with a leak in the future. But I'm gonna rub silicone on these when I put them on anyway, so. Guys, check this out, off topic, but in my last video I was showing how Leo likes to hang out on this particular bike. And look what I just found sitting right here. He's using the KZ1000 for nut storage for the winter. So I'm gonna leave that right there and we'll see I, I never saw him put it there. I'll have to look back on my garage cameras though. That's hilarious. was just full of crud. Just flushing her all out. Now the plugs that came out of there are shallow. You see they get the, they're much shallower than the ones I got, which this is all they had. Didn't think it was gonna be a problem. However, upon closer inspection, it seems it might be, because you see these actually, um, they, are easier to install because you kind of can use them as like a pilot. You put them in a little bit and then you hammer them the rest of the way. But you see how, how loose that is in there? They don't grab until the way end. So I think I'm gonna have to get some shallow ones. Might be able to use them in the center because there's no obstructions on, on these ones or, or that one either, but not on, on the back. Here's what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna swedge these out a little bit. I got a 27 millimeter socket that doesn't fit and I'm gonna make it fit. So I just expanded the plug a little bit and now 
tap it, tap it right out. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah, there it goes. All right, cool. So now we got a bigger plug. Oh yeah, that's much better. So now it's it's snug, and I'll silicone and hammer the rest of those in. All right, got those all in. Now this tool I'm using here, this is specifically designed for this. And see, like, so on that one, it's on a, it's on an angle, and you couldn't get at it straight. This works great for that. So it's got this little little ball head and uh, freeze plug installer. It really works well for tight spots although this one's got a ton of space i've definitely done much worse before and if you were doing a marine engine you would actually want to use instead of steel you would use brass plugs i even have one in here so there's one uh, because these won't rust out and i remember one of the first engines i was ever rebuilding uh, my toyota 22 re engine out of my 89 pickup i stressed i was like no i'm gonna use brass plugs like why would it why the factory ever put steel plugs in there that was so stupid but yeah if you're replacing some it's always a good idea to go with the brass ones if you got the extra money because you'll just never have to do them again and also they're a little bit easier to install because uh, the metal is more malleable All right, Leo just showed up in the garage, so I'm gonna see if he knows what this nut is. Let's see if he, and if not, I'll break it open for him. There he goes, come on. You might not know there's good stuff in there. Let's break this open for you. There we go. Hey, buddy. Look at that. Oh, what's in here? Look at this. Look, it's a nut for you. Yeah, you smell that? Oh, now you want it, huh? All right, I'll let you open it the rest of the way. Yeah, see, cause we, he probably saw the other squirrels getting these and he's like, well, everybody else is getting them, but well, don't bite me. Here we go. Yeah, there's the rest of it. Look at that. Now he knows what's inside of those nuts in case you didn't already before. So let me try some of that. Oh, what? Come on. I was expecting this, but uh, it's gonna be the water pump too, trickling out of there. And uh, that's how much it leaked overnight. While we're waiting on the carburetor parts, I think I'm gonna pull these seats out and pressure wash uh, these, because I can't even get in here with how much mold there is. It's just disgusting. Get out of here. It looks like somebody just never got around to finishing this car, because all this is freshly painted and then rusting back off. It's been many years. Get this back door open. this little thing see how good these actually work oh not that good geez let's see how my leatherman would fare in this situation though look at that that's these things are junk it gets blocked up in there and then it don't cut nothing here he is babe leo just showed, showed up hey 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 she's gonna give you milk buddy leo leo Got two by fours under the seats. <laughs> A little bit of rust there. This has had water pulling it for a long while. Alright, there's a quick before on the seats. I'll see what the pressure washer does.
That is heavy. These old things are heavy duty. That's like 3 8 steel. And these big old heavy duty hinge and backing plate. He's got to weight 100 something pounds. call that detailed enough for me to work inside of it I got most of the mold blown off everywhere picked up a walker carburetor kit and yeah normally I would just go through this carburetor and clean everything out and put it back together but these gaskets are they're just so ripped apart and so baked on there uh, from time so this kit comes with all the new gaskets some jets uh, well I'm sorry fuel fuel valves no jets diaphragms and yeah most importantly the gaskets that i need now going through carburetors is pretty straightforward not going to do a how-to on that or anything you just got to make sure you put things back together the way they came apart and don't break anything however the hardest part when you have baked on gaskets is, is getting those removed without gouging up the aluminum uh, so you know you scrape at it with a gasket scraper or a screwdriver you're going to screw it up so i found the best method is well, they have gasket remover spray that you can't really get anymore because it has methylene chloride in it. And so does this premium paint stripper. Uh, this is old stock, so I don't, maybe you can get it if you, if you got a connection. Um, but good stuff. I will put this on those gaskets and it will just melt them away. Get my fuel needle out of here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here's what that looks like. Get the float out and the fuel inlet, which look at that, it doesn't have a screen. Like, look, if I'm trying to get this off now, you can see I already put a couple gouges trying to get, I mean, it's just so, you, you gouge into the aluminum. And this one kind of gelled up a little bit. I'll just put a little blob on there. This reminds me of that movie, uh, The Blob. Anybody remember that? An old man finds it, touches it, and this is the shocking result. We'll just make a little bowl size glob and drop her in there. Look at that. What happens with these needle seats over time is they get corrosion on the brass and then the, the O-rings dry out and fuel can leak, leak past the O-ring or the little needle has a rubber head too that gets super dried out. I got some other stuff I could try out too and uh, they did ban this methylene chloride for a good reason. It's, it's extremely deadly. If you leave it exposed like that, you want to put plastic over it so it doesn't dry and you get the full effect. Of course, these ones, I you know, left them sitting down, so that's okay. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's see what's going on here. So check this out. Oh, look at that. Just comes right off, right down to the bare aluminum. No problem. No scratches, no problem. So that stuff is incredible. You just got to make sure, again, to wear... Well, wear a mask uh, of some sort of respirator, safety glasses, and good ventilation. And that's if you can even get methylene chloride. If you go on eBay, you can actually find guys selling it. So sometimes you might have to put paint a little bit extra on, but there you go. That is the hardest part of cleaning carburetors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Mm. Got everything all cleaned up and sprayed every hole through with brake clean to make sure that uh, the orifices are clear and going back together with it. Not not doing a full entire rebuild split of the part. It, I don't think this thing needs it. Now on these float needles, I forgot to mention before, but you, you do want to note their position before taking them out. Otherwise, you're going to have to just manually reset the float level. But you got to do that anyway. Essentially, this float should shut the fuel off where it's base, the fuel level and the bowl should be level just under this this screw right here. So you can blow on it until it stops flowing and twist this as need be to just get like a rough where it needs to be, float level. With this all buttoned up, next thing I did was remove the flat head plugs from each bowl and we'll uh, hook up the pump and see what our float level is. Oh, uh, pump has not established prime yet. All right, I got it to establish up oh, and see that one's pouring out, so I gotta adjust that float.
Okay, that's not leaking. I'll put these plugs back in, good enough to start, and then we'll recheck it because it might be too low. I'll have to recheck that after run the bowl down some. Still waiting on the water pump, so hopefully that comes in later today, but we're good enough to start it. <laughs> Pouring cool now, so maybe uh, who knows? Oh, here it is. Ah, oh, yeah, just pouring out from down there. Okay, let's get this water pump out of here. We could see this pump wasn't spinning at all. It's just kind of freewheeling on there. And I'll be honest, if I had known it was this bad, I uh, would have taken it off before while I was doing the freeze plug so we could flush this out a little bit better, but that's okay. I'll get it nice and clean. I could always pop this whole housing off. I just noticed this down here too. I saw a little hairline crack and you can see that needs to be resoldered on the red. I don't know why I was dancing around taking this off. It just had to. Even the, the small orifices are all clogged up. And here's looking into the block. You can see, I'm trying to get some of that build up. Oh, I can't even reach my finger in there. Yeah, I gotta definitely get some of that build up off of there. Yeah, we'll call that good enough. Not bad. I gotta pump this fuel tank out. And maybe clean this stuff out of here too. Um, let's see. Wow, this doesn't even. Oh, look at that. That looks like it might be seeping a little bit, a little pinhole in the bottom. Yeah. But it sounds good, so I'll just pump out what's in there and use it. There's not even a hose that goes to it. It's just that's that's the whole tank, that tiny little thing. And this is the entrance to it. Luckily, there's only like a gallon in there, so pretty raunchy stuff, though. Filling it with five gallons of fresh fuel, and then we'll recheck tomorrow for leaks. Put a pan down here in case it starts uh, leaking. The underhood fuel filter on this was leaking, and no matter what I do, I try tightening it down, and it just won't. It's kind of a sweet design. It's easy to clean out, and it's got this glass tube. I don't know if it's glass or what it's made out of, but I would assume something that can take a fire. And then just a, a little threaded like aluminum or zinc rod in here. But unfortunately, the threads on this side are stripped out, so it won't, can't reuse it. However, I should have something we can use in my uh, fuel filters. So I've got one of these plastic Kubota ones, but you can't use plastic under the hood. I got a used one off my STX-12F. That'll work. That's, uh, yeah. That'll work. Oh, it's not. Um, no, it's so good. Oh, look at this. This is just like the other one. Yeah, look at that. This thing's like a direct knockoff. So I'll use the rod and tube out of this one and then the ends from this one and replace the O-rings too with these ones. Perfect. That'll work. Hoarding pays off, I tell you guys. Like new. Perfect. Now let's see this brake fluid. It ain't empty, so that's always a good sign. 
Now this is a single service master cylinder, so instead of two lines coming off of it, it's only got one. And if this goes out while you're driving, well, you have no brakes. That's why they don't use them anymore. They use a dual service master cylinder. It has one line for the front and one line for the rear. All right, I'm not getting any flow out of this master cylinder at all. I actually sucked brake fluid out of the rear, but the fluid level never went down here. And the, I mean, the pedal does return, so that's good. Probably just be able to clean it up. Oh yeah, piston came right out. And yeah, we just got to clean all the sludge out of there, flush out the lines. The seals look okay, so I'm going to just clean this thing out and put her back together and we'll uh, hope for the best. Oh yeah, that worked great. Better than at home. It's good to bleed it before you put it in the car too, so what you do is just fill it up with brake fluid. Cover your finger on the outlet, or if it was a dual master, both outlets, and then depress the piston and hold your finger on there and keep doing that. So you let the air out, and you keep going back and forth till you get fluid out. And there it goes. Once you get some fluid coming out, then you're, uh, you're bled. So even with the chamber bled, it's not leaking out, and we're good to throw it in the car. a rookie move let's double down on this one there we go no rust penetrant needed I got lucky with this bolt break and leaving a nice nipple for me. Uh, of course, I should have heated this and done this by hand to begin with, but you know, sometimes I just get careless and reckless. Should pop right out of there. As far as fixing this radiator, there's quite a bit of corrosion underneath this steel plate, but I think we can clean this up and solder it, make it work. And unfortunately, I slammed on my brakes and the water pump housing rolled and, and landed on this thing. But I don't think that's leaking. That's just an unfortunate uh, scenario there. Not a perfect job, but it should seal, so I just plug this and put the rad cap on, and I have a, a small plug with a regulator, so I put about 10, 10 PSI in there, and I hear another leak. And no bubbles coming from this repair, and here is this other leak.
Finally got it all sealed. Using Permatex the right stuff in place of the gaskets for this pump housing. This is just the best stuff ever. I use it on everything. Nice freshy pump. Only 35 bucks for this. Uh, so far the only part besides the oil filter and the freeze plugs. Shooting for no parts on this, but uh, we're not quite at no parts, but not, not too bad. You have to put thread sealant or Teflon tape, or you can even use silicone on the bolts for this water pump because uh, they're not blind holes, as in they, they enter into the cooling system. So if you don't, coolant's gonna trickle out over time. And you can see, usually a good indicator of that is when you see corrosion and pitting on the ends of the bolts, that means they were sitting in the coolant. And clearly the, the these two were probably sitting on the bottom because they're all hammed up. You always wanna spin the pump after you put it in too. It spins nice and true and quiet. All right, that's all back together. I'm gonna let the silicone dry overnight before I fill it with coolant. And now I just need to bleed the brakes. So uh, I got the seat mounted back in here on some blocks of wood. It's like really hack, but that'll work. And I'm gonna get Jen out here, but I, she said if I start a fire, she'll come outside. So I'm gonna do that because it's, it's below freezing tonight. And this fuel tank hasn't been dripping at all. Um, looks the same on the bottom. So we'll see. Uh, I think that's gonna be just fine for now. And then uh, maybe we'll be driving this thing tomorrow if we get brakes. There she is, ready to work out in the cold. And cut those all bled out. Let's do a brake test. Hit it. Let lid off. And hit it. Look at that, beautiful. It's just like disc brakes, except they're drum brakes. <laughs> and it's test drive day. Only got another couple hours of sunlight, but uh, we should be able to get it running. We're getting down the road. Let's try filling this with antifreeze one more time. I was able to get a new key ignition switch on eBay for dirt cheap. Here it goes. Not a perfect fit, but I was able to make it work. We got the fuel filter hooked up. We still have to set the timing, but I'm gonna warm it up. Seems to be halfway near where it needs to be. Oh, this pump didn't get primed. That's what's happening right now. So, not getting any fuel to the bowls. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, let's pressurize the fuel tank. Oh. There it goes. I can hear it now. Oh. Yes, that's kind of a, a bad design. Needs a check valve. I got that primed up, idling good. It's a little rough. Let's see what this timing's at. Uh, no coolant leaks, so that's good news, right? <laughs> yeah. We got total timing around 39, 40 degrees. I'm good with that. Definitely running rough, though. I think we're gonna need to have some rejetting or go take this thing out and let it rip. And the alternator is not charging at idle. Let's see if we bring it up. Oh yeah, there we go. We got we got charging voltage. Awesome. First impressions is that transmission shot. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to sound a little better. The tranny was like a bunch of grinding noises when I first started raising the RPM. It wasn't even moving. And you know what I'm bringing. I'm bringing the Meepo Mini in case we break down. I can actually get back home. This thing's got like a 20 mile range on it. It's awesome. Not even gonna clean the windows. That way when I get stopped, I can hold with the story to, come on, man, I just got this thing running. All 
right now. Does it stop good? Um, yeah, it's, it stops. I wouldn't say good, but it stops. Now right, we gotta get some gas at Wawa. I guess we should go clean the rest of these windows, but I'm leaving the paint the way it is for now. I love it. Damn, this tank's bigger than I thought it was. It's actually, uh, yeah, it's like 20 gallons. I already put five in there before. But will it restart after stopping? Uh, I'm gonna call that a yes. Carburetor definitely needs tuning on this. Yeah, foam these windows up and then pressure wash them off. Oh, what the heck? I guess I'll give it a, a thorough rinse just to get some of the big buildup off there. Yeah, it's looking better. I mean, if it was uniformly dirty, I would totally leave it, but it's... Oh, look, that don't come off. Cool. And that's what you get with 12 minutes of cleaning on this. Blew off a bunch of this loose paint, exposed, uh, you know, the rust and the primer, and let's get going. Still gotta fix that door handle. Sixty-five. Oh, nice. You don't see them every day. <laughs> yeah, she's sucking gas, all right. wrap this video up here we've answered the question of will it run and uh, the answer is yes this old girl's got a ton of life left in her i uh, could certainly go on and on with this since this this vehicle is going to need new tires the brakes got to be completely gone over they might still have plenty of life left needs a full interior and many other things among that uh, some some rust on the bodywork and all that but listen if you guys got a good idea uh, but listen, if you guys got a good idea for a part two, drop them down below. And if anybody's interested in buying this car, I might be putting it up for sale. If, if you have an idea on its value too, <laughs> it'd be awesome if you drop a comment of that down below. Since you've kind of seen every everything, you know, you've seen everything that this car has to offer so far. Of course, we haven't really had it up on a lift in the, in the shop yet or anything. But uh, you know, a little bit of rust coming out and stuff. But uh, definitely plenty of life left in this old. 65 Fury. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Drop it a thumbs up if you did. Consider checking out the channel and I greatly appreciate you guys watching. By the way, just passed 100,000 subscribers on my main channel, so that's huge. I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for watching these videos. Yeah, it takes a lot of time to put them together, but I really do enjoy messing with this old junk. So if there's, a, you know, if you guys enjoy watching it, I'm gonna keep pumping it out. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm done rambling. That was a long one. So till next time, this is no nonsense, no how. And I hope to see you again. See you guys. Oh, and one more reason I'm not going to mess with this car anymore yet is because I don't have a title yet. So I still have to go through that process of trying to get a title. Uh, otherwise, it's not really worth putting any time and money into this thing. Well, I already put a lot of time in, but money, more importantly.